In this video, we'll be looking at a medial triangle. First off, what is a medial triangle? Well, a medial triangle is the triangle that is inside of another triangle by its midpoints. So, we construct midpoints on our big triangle, and when we connect all of those midpoints, this, this triangle is a medial triangle. Well, let's go over some properties. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can talk about its properties. Now, if we look at this inside triangle, we kind of can see a couple of things. One is that this line and this line, these seem to be parallel. Similarly, this line and this line seem to be parallel, and then this line and this line seem to be parallel as well. So first off, let's, let's see if they actually are. We'll pick a line and pick a point and then construct parallel lines. And we'll notice that no matter how we change this, we'll always get a parallel line. Similarly, this line and this line will construct a parallel line. No matter how much we change the triangle, we'll always have this line and this line be parallel. And similarly, the third line, this line and this line, are parallel as well. So now that we know these are parallel lines, let's look at a shape inside of that. Let's look at this shape. Poorly drawn, but if we look at this shape, we notice we have two sides parallel, the other two sides parallel, so we have a parallelogram. And once we know we have a parallelogram, we can start doing properties of parallel lines. So using properties of parallel lines, we know that if we have a line that intersects two parallel lines, that opposite angles will be equal. So if we know this is true, then we go down here and we notice that OLN, OLN, will be similar to the angle LN, let's call it P. Similarly, this angle will be equal to this angle over here. We also know that we have an extension. If we extend this line, the line segment N M out, we will get another parallel line. So we'll call this 3 and there. And then this big one will be the similar as this big one. Well, now let's try to neaten this up a little bit. We know that since N O, the line that continues from M O, is parallel to N L, we have that this angle and this angle are going to be s the same. Similarly, this angle and this angle are going to be the same. So, if we now neaten this up a little bit, then we will get that this angle and this and this angle are the same as well as this angle and this angle are the same and so is this one if we look at m l n q if we look at this parallelogram we will have another set of similar angles and if we just go through them we have this angle these two angles being similar. We have, we'll say this one and this one, these are the same. So, if we look at it as a whole, we notice that now we have two similar triangles. M, L, N, and L, N, Q are similar. And if we look over here at O, M, L, we can do some angle addition and subtraction and notice that this angle is the exact same angle as as our 3 over here. So we can call it 3 and then up here that's left us with so now if we neaten everything up oh geez, grab this
we need everything up, then we can say this angle, this angle, this angle are all the same. This angle, this angle, and this angle are all the same, as well as these two, these angles are the same. So, we have a triangle that is similar to its two other counterparts. Now, if we move up into our big triangle, we notice that we have two angles being equal, so that two angles, so that must mean this third one is the same angle as here. So, our whole medial triangle, M, L, N, is similar to our big triangle, let's call it R, O, Q. So, R, O, Q is similar to M, L, N. So that's with the angles, but we know similar triangles have to have the lengths being at a certain ratio. So if we pick up our pointer and we look at this and measure this length, we pick up this one, measure this length, pick up this, measure its length, then we notice, and we measure this one, this one, measure this one. So if we look at these two, we look at these two, and we look at these two, we notice that the corresponding sides are one half of each other. So that means that this length, which, so I guess it's P, let's scratch out our R here. Q was right, yay! So P, O, we look over here, P, O, and N, L are one half of each other. So all of these corresponding sides are one half. So we know the lengths and the angles and their correspondence. Now let's look at their areas. If we know that, let's, let's say P, O, Q, we know the formula one half base times height, and if we look at our inverted medial triangle, and M, and L, and we have one half, and then we have one half the base, since we know it's half the size, times the new height, we will notice that our medial triangle is even smaller than our larger one. Now all we have to do is just find out exactly what the new height is. So if we come over here and we construct a perpendicular so we get the height, and we do the same thing with our medial triangle, and create line segments for the height. Then we can get the lengths of each one. And we notice that these are also one half difference. So we have that our triangle P O Q, which is one half our base times height, and our M and L, which we noticed was one fourth times the base, the base, sorry, and we also know it's one half times the height. We have it is so in conclusion. Our medial triangle is one-fourth the area of our larger triangle. So not only is the medial triangle a similar triangle, but it is one-fourth the area. But we can kind of see that if we have one, two, three, four, four different triangles in here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. If we have four that are all similar, they all should have the same area. So 
well, it's for the exact triangles, they all share the same area. So we have one fourth is of the bigger one.